as the second generation of Chinese in this country, and uh, we've noticed that in your life you've kept a lot of Chinese culture. And how do you feel like to keep that culture in your heart? Well, you know, because I think in a way I'm, I'm artistic, so I love. I love Chinese things because they're all handmade. Uh -huh. Even the simple things are beautiful. Uh, made of wood or straw or anything is it's beautiful because so much care is put into the design and the and the way it's made. Mm -hmm. And it's it uh, just shows how how uh, good Chinese people are with their hands yes. and with their the way they bring beautiful things into you know eventuality. This is uh, made by hand. Everything's been carved by hand from one single stone. And all these little rings have been, there's no, they haven't been added on, they're just carved out. And inside it's all hand painted on the inside with a brush inside this bottle. This is beautiful. This one I should show you. Oh, right. This is ivory. Beautiful calligraphy. Uh -huh. And it's all done by hand. And all those beautiful horses. And it comes to pieces. So there's three pieces. This is a mm -hmm. See how beautiful? Beautiful. Look at how elegant and fine. Mm, so color. fine. Mm. Goes, Maybe go, it's, it's better with... It goes in here. See how beautifully it's made? This one is beautiful. It's an, in, it's an incense, called an incense burner, but, oh. it, but you don't burn Some incense, yeah. And this is wood. <laughs> and this is actually, this here is made to look like bronze, but yeah. it's actually porcelain. Okay. Isn't that clever? Yes. Yeah. See, but it's actually porcelain. How old is this piece? But that's of old. That's quite old. Actually, I found that I found that in Beijing. Oh, okay. And I was in the Arts and Crafts headquarters, uh -huh. the main office. Yeah. They had it in their in their showcase, and I said, "Oh, I love that." And they said, "Can I buy it?" Say yes. <laughs> Very special. <laughs> My grandfather came to Australia during the gold rush. Uh, uh, at that time, uh, there were many Chinese leaving the country because the times were bad and there was very little food to eat and they were just poor peasants. And so many of them went to America for the gold rush and a lot of them came to Australia, which was called, the, uh, actually in San Francisco, it was called the Old Gold Mountain. And when they came to Australia, they called Australia the New Gold Mountain, and that was in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather came as 18 years old. Yeah. And uh, later on in his life, he married my grandmother when he was middle-aged, and my grandmother was only in her twen early 20s. And she came out from China all by herself to marry a man she'd never met and was match made. Oh, she, she was very brave. Mm -hmm. So she was a very brave By lady. herself? She, well, she would have come with somebody from yeah. the village. But they did well, they had a business, good business in Little Burke Street. And they were fruit merchants, wholesale fruit merchants. What was uh, Burke Street like in that time? Little Burke Street? Yeah, Little Burke Street. Oh, just old buildings, little old buildings. And a lot of little uh, grocery shops, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, there were a few, um, there were a few Chinese living there, but there were no families, they're mostly single men because mm -hmm. Because of the white Australia policy, yeah. the wives not allowed to come. That's right. So there are all these single men, lots of single men. Why did Chinese all choose that place? Well, it was near the city. Yes. It was right in the middle of the city. Uh -huh. I don't know why they chose yeah. it. And then it was near the market. A lot of them were market gardeners. You know, some things are not planned. They just happen, you know, yeah. in, especially in those days. And a lot of the shops, they, they actually were 
grocer shops, but they also wrote letters for the people who couldn't write. write. Oh, you know, a lot okay. of people are not educated. The letter writers? Yeah, they would write letters for them. They would help them with translation okay. for yes. for the English. You uh -huh. know, if they get into trouble, they need a translator or something like that. And, and they were good. And they used to have a newspaper, a Chinese newspaper. Uh -huh. So these old men who had no homes, just alone, you know, no families. They could come to these shops and have a cup of tea, uh, read the newspaper, and smoke one of those pipes, you know, the water pipes, yes, yes. and play mahjong in the back. So, uh -huh. so that was their social life. Yes. They didn't have any social yeah. life. You know, it was sad, very sad. Yeah, especially if they are not respected. It toughens you actually. Mm. You can't ha if you have an easy life, then you don't you don't grow, do you? You have to have a bit of a tough life to become something. Yeah, don't you think? Yes. And I think Chinese are used to having tough lives. Don't you think? They can cope, they cope quite well. <laughs> cheers. Oh, cheers. 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 Say, what is that? Bottoms up, wasn't it? Yeah. Gambay. Oh, Gambay. Gambay. <laughs> for, for, for a long life, for a hundred year, this is a hundred year tea. Mm -hmm. It's like very good tea, you know that that good tea from Yunnan. Oh, it's nice. <laughs> the etiquette of this. Just a little, not too much. Yeah. Where is this? Just... Yeah, this bit. 